Come on, folks. Boom. We out here. Yeah. Well, just, we're inside. I worked out yesterday, and this little this little pose hurts a little too much. Oh, you worked out. I worked out. I work oh. out, Alexis. Damn. I, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Some people just, you know, care about their health and well-being. Well, you got a doctor's <laughs> appointment coming up? What you working out for? I'm trying to impress <laughs> the nurse practitioner. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, how are my numbers doing? <laughs> What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode. It's the Cooligans, buddy. Of the Cooligans. Excited to be here. Uh, my name is Christian Polanco. That's right. I'm Alexis Guerrero. And we are not. We're we're here. Mm. But our producer is Miguelito. not. Miguelito. He went. Not, he went home. He went full. full no, estoy, estoy aquí. Estoy a casa. Estoy a casa. Bro. <laughs> yes, the voice you're hearing, Miguelito. He's he is. Uh, calling in remote. He is re remotely producing or producing remotely. Yeah, 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 yeah. He do. He do a little work from home. <laughs> this, this is a little 2024 production, right? Here. Yeah. <laughs> so, he's doing a little work from La Playa, bro. <laughs> My man. He's wearing a thong. Yeah. You know, meaning the, yeah. the the shoes. The shoes. The flip. Nah, the nah, flip the other one, I got the other. I got the other one on too, bro. Don't worry. <laughs> and look, I, I, I was trying to uh, you know incorporate because we don't in studio we don't have a camera for mm -hmm. Miguelito. But I was like, yo, maybe it might be fun uh, uh, to to get him on screen. Why are going to see what he looks like? Is this a first time? Look at that, bro. Oh. <laughs> He's right here. Oh, oh look. He got the <laughs> what was that? The, is that the thumbs up? Yeah, thing? he hasn't yeah, shut off the the it. video yeah. reactions on his MacBook. Why? This is the new U2 album. <laughs> Nobody asked for this. <laughs> but it's automatically on our computer. It is by default. So look, but it worked perfectly with nice. the timing. All right. So uh, Miguelito is... He is in Miami. He is. Uh, you're still gonna uh, hear him, and uh, you know he's still uh, very much a part of this. His show. accent might change. He's at the Metalark Studio for the first time. Yeah. Okay. Like, hey, I'm time. at the Metalark Studio. <laughs> <laughs> All right, whoa, 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 whoa. How can a guy named Miguelito culturally appropriate? <laughs> I love it. Uh, so uh, we have a lot to go over uh, today because the uh, you know U.S. Open Cup is happening. The uh, there's so much going. The Nations on. League, mm. uh, uh, you know, the, the U.S. Men's National Team uh, will be playing today. Mm. Uh, Jamaica uh, against uh, against Jamaica, and uh, so and then uh, a couple other things, obviously. I mentioned U.S. Open Cup. Um, uh, but also, League. we have a guest, bro. We do have a guest, and this is this is a big deal. This is a huge deal because one of I think we teased it a little mm -hmm. bit on the last episode because we were like, we just want to make sure it actually happens. We don't want to uh, get our hopes up and then something happened. Right? Uh, no, but he we we recorded. We uh, it, it's I tell you, it, we put it on wax. Yeah. If you are a older <laughs> millennial lady that <laughs> listens to this show, which we got plenty, or or older than that was that a Gen X? Yeah. Maybe a Gen X, you know? Maybe mm -hmm. you enjoyed early morning television in the early 2000s <laughs> and the late 2000s. You're going to so, wanna so You're going to want to watch this if you're listening. <laughs> because we we are joined by none other. The most chiseled jawline that's ever been on this show. <laughs> um Mark Consuelos wow. will be joining us in just a moment. <laughs> Mark Consuelos, obviously. Do we have a drip button for all the <laughs> ladies listening? I hope not. I hope. I'll give you one of those. I do not. I'm not going to add I that button. I want to have one of those. Uh, boop. I want to have one of them <laughs> oh, buttons. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> We're just going to gross out our audience. Uh, no. So Mark Consuelos, uh, obviously from live uh, with Kelly and Mark uh, every morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, ABC, right? ABC. That's and a different channel. We don't co-sign that. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. but those two, they're, they're great. Get on DraftKings Network, yeah, Kelly know, bro. <laughs> and Mark. Why not? <laughs> anyway, um, the uh, so they're gonna, uh, uh, he's going to be joining us uh, to talk about uh, one of the clubs that he owns in Italy. They both own it. I found that out. Both oh, him I and Kelly well, Okay, look at that. It's a, it's a family cool. business. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> Campo Basso is, uh, is Mark Consuelo's, uh, his, uh, his club, and he's going to be talking about it. And uh, my man, I mean, not only does he know calcio, he knows football. He's, he's a, he played uh, uh, and 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 he's also incredibly handsome. So yeah. uh, I mean, two you you combine those two when things. When you bring both of them together, 
I'm just like, yo, you are. I you, thought it was just me, you, <laughs> you know, but it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you are free to walk through that door if, <laughs> oh, if man. you know both of those things. Yeah, if you yeah. have both of those qualities. You are welcome on our show. <laughs> so Marcos Wells will be joining us in a little bit. So My stick- first question was, Mark, could you stop looking at me like that? <laughs> <laughs> I asked politely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are, we're not twins, dude. You can stop asking. Um, but, okay, so we'll get to that in a little bit. We have a lot of uh, soccer to, to go over, but this right now, we're going to start with actually something a little bit different. We're going to start. We're going to be a little um, I mean, <laughs> I think. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. Because we have to talk about basketball. Yeah. Just we're a talking moment. basketball. <laughs> Hold so up. I think we're, we're talking about maybe trying to achieve basketball. <laughs> but we may not be actually talking basketball here. <laughs> okay. What's what's below G League? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 we have to talk about it because Amin El Hassan, uh, our co-worker here at mm. Metal Arc Media, former uh, guest of the show, he's been on the show. Uh, we hung. I got. I was on when I was on Lebertard show in Miami just recently. We got. Uh, you know, he was on the show as well. Uh, we were talking about Messi versus Maradona. You know, Marad- He he claims Maradona was better because he did it while on cocaine. And they, it became a real fun segment that on is, the show. You know what? That's a good point. <laughs> and maybe homie should have hit the snow. You know what I mean? Hit the slopes before playing basketball. Because if you haven't seen this clip of Amina Hassan. I'll try to explain it for those listening. Yes. At, he's at a, a celebrity basketball game. He's at the three-point line at the corner, which is, by the way, I have no depth perception or a very bad depth perception. Okay. My, there was uh, an issue where I shoved the straw into my left eye when I was young. <laughs> hold on, hold on, story. hold on. <laughs> what? What? I thought when I was a kid, I thought if I put a straw in my eye, I'd be able to see further. Wow. No the way. Alexis was the, no uh, way. the original left eye <laughs> yeah, from TLC. Yeah. And guess what I found out? <laughs> you don't. Okay. But your mother does rush with you as liquid flies out of your eye. All right. But well, anyway, we'll get to that. Uh, hold on. What I'm point. saying is, it's very difficult for me to hit a, a three pointer from the left because without the backboard, it's hard for me to gauge the distance. Gotcha. That's not. The issue That's here. not the issue here. Here, it's very much a form issue. <laughs> so Amin, uh, we're all we're watching Amin, and we're just gonna let this loop a couple times. Yeah, yeah. Amin is uh, taking. He's warming up. He's, he's, she's shooting a three. Now let me ask you, uh, Christian. You've probably done this before. You seem like the kind of person who does this at parties. <laughs> Have you ever taken a basketball and spun it so that it spins on your finger? Yeah. Yes. I'm not good at it, but I know the motion. Okay. Yes, now yes. imagine you did that at the end of your shooting motion. <laughs> okay. So look, I mean, am when, I explaining it well? I think so. When you know, when, uh, you know the, the the last few years that that especially Steph Curry has been in the league, mm-hmm. uh, people have been talking about uh, shooting form, mm-hmm. right? Where your you elbow tuck is. Your elbow. Tuck elbow. Tuck there. your elbow. Because we that know, would not have helped here. We know <laughs> of uh, some classic. Uh, uh, unorthodox shooting forms yes. like um, Sean Marion is the one that comes to mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sean Marion had the like uh, shooting, shooting the basketball like a soccer player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly. not really. No one wants <laughs> to do that. Right. Just, but, but my man was a bucket. It. Yeah, yeah. He, he found a way. <laughs> <laughs> unlike unlike <laughs> professional soccer players, he found a way to get the ball in. The so net. Amina Hassan is uh, warming up, taking a shot, and this. Image and the, these these uh, you know this these moving pictures. There's mm-hmm. four seconds of it has uh, the internet captivated the internet. captivated the internet. Everybody's roasting him, and mainly because Amin's job is to uh, uh, critique mm-hmm. and, and give his opinions on basketball. That is his expertise. He works for the Phoenix Suns in, in, in at the front office. My man knows uh, he knows the game in and out. Can, we, gonna, all, can we just? Pause this for a second. Sure. And also just talk about, <laughs> oh, what a perfect timing <laughs> on the pause. <laughs> it, it currently looks, this is, the, the, the ball just left his hand. Yeah. One hand is facing west, the other one is <laughs> facing north. That's not what you want. I was going to say, you guys, you guys would be pretty proud of this one. It's look like he's, he's got a pretty nasty curveball coming. Yeah. Out hey, <laughs> I will also try. say that he, he currently, the body form right now looks as if, He's just been hit by a bus. <laughs> but, but look, <laughs> his fingers are pointing to the shot clock. Yeah. But the yeah. ball yeah. is going to the other yeah. shot clock. Yeah. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? On the other end of the court. This is Kellen Acosta's <laughs> goal. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to talk about the 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 dress how the man is is dressed currently. Okay. He looks like he got he was the last pick of the first round. Oh, He's come wearing on. which is oh, the pretty good. body <laughs> spandex. No, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> The, the, he's not shooting like that. <laughs> he's got the full body spandex. He's yeah. got the what are these socks with the dots? 
that all the players true wear. True socks. True socks. He's got the true socks on. He's got the full body black spandex, the 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 full soccer, I mean, so the full basketball jersey and shorts yeah. over it. He got the. It looks like he might be wearing a full like leotard. One hundred percent. Are those the Sabrina Ionesco ones? I don't know. <laughs> the, they might be the Sabrinas. <laughs> My man is wearing bucket like clothing. <laughs> <laughs> but what you what comes, you think people are gonna make the argument for a mean like he should have used a smaller ball? He yeah, yeah, used yeah. a WNBA <laughs> ball. He should. He, you know how they said Sabrina maybe uh, bit off more than she could chew by trying to say I'll shoot from the NBA three. Right, right. Which by the way we do not co-sign. Shouts to the New York Liberty. Shouts to Sabrina. Uh, by the way, we want Sabrina on this show. Let's this go. would be a, a dream guest. Awesome. Uh, Come on. I will say in this case maybe I mean should have tried this from. Maybe the 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 like out of bounds free throw shot. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. Not the three point line. The, look, I don't know. Can, also, can we bring the basket down? <laughs> Is that possible for my? I want to see a mean dunk, bro. Yeah. Bring yeah. the basket down without oh, his yeah. feet leaving the ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we look. Uh, he's been he's been having fun with it. He's been retweeting everything and and uh, you know going in on all the jokes. It is what it is, bro. You 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 criticize. Uh, you know, we we did free kicks. Hey. With, we did free kicks with NYCFC no, no, players. We, we attempted. Free we kicks. attempted free kicks. You had a good one. You had a good one. I had a good one. My right, but my left was brutal. And my, both my feet <laughs> <laughs> were brutal. Although uh, the right one, I think, wasn't terrible. Right. So look, it, this is. Uh, I like that he's he can laugh about it. You have, gotta have you gotta have a sense of humor, especially so when your job is to cook athletes. <laughs> so, when yeah. you try to do something and it looks like this, you about to get cooked. Yourself. Exactly. So that it's part of the game. It's part of the hustle of being in media. This is a brutal, brutal <laughs> place to ball. Not, not a great, uh, not a great shot. But <laughs> no. I've, you know, I've seen other photos of Amin, uh, you know, dribbling and 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 laying up the ball and other. So this is those are all Photoshop. That's AI. <laughs> it's this AI. is the Kate real. Middleton edited those photos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, uh, <laughs> to put the them royal on. family says, "Yo, we saw him dunk." <laughs> <laughs> My man did it under That's the legs, AI. bro. I, I mean, won the slam dunk competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? yeah. The uh, East Bay Funk <laughs> Dunk was invented That's in Amin's AI backyard. Mean. Um, AI Amin Hassan. Right Amin, yeah. So shout out to Amin Al Hassan. Uh, you know, it is what it is, but uh, you know, we we still we support. This is the homie. So yeah. everybody's cooking you. And it's like, yo, all right, we'll just, we'll just. We just want to pile on for the culture, you know. <laughs> we I mean? laid back in the cut for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But now we, we had, let the we internet had our, speak. We and had, now we can. Now we had our say, and it's all love. You roast the ones you love. Uh, so, so shout out <laughs> uh, to Amino Hassan. We're starting with Concacaf Nations League. Um, it's coming up. First game is going to be tonight, Thursday night. Whenever you're listening to this, it might have happened already. Thursday night, USMNT. Uh, first thing we want to talk about though is the roster. We never got a chance to really review which players got selected. What are you guys' thoughts on the team? You know, how do you think they're going to fare uh, in this tournament? I think a lot of people were shocked that Gio Reyna is on the squad. Right. Because he's not obviously not getting a lot of playing time with Nottingham Forest. Not a lot. It's not, it's okay. not any. <laughs> right now, some people are like, wait, he's still on Nottingham Forest? Um, Damn, they, yeah, they, the they, they deduct minutes from Gio Reyna like they deduct points from Nottingham Forest, bro. Uh, Damn. <laughs> don't mean to... Don't mean to roast y'all too hard, but I'm. And that's an Everton fan, yo. <laughs> got, you know how hard it was for him to do that. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Yeah, okay, second charge coming up. <laughs> uh, your boy's upset. Uh huh. Like when you know when you tip after the the Uber Eats comes, <laughs> second charge coming up. You about to get another notification. Uh, I feel bad for Gio Reyna because. People are putting a lot of doubt on his abilities with the national team. But this is where we see him shine, man. Yeah. He wasn't getting minutes with Dortmund, came in Nations League, and he cooked them boys. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's how I look. I do expect him to um, gain some confidence. Yeah, because at least somebody. The, you got to get the aggression out. You know what at mean? least somebody trusts him to put him in a game. That's and it's, saying. It's, it's, it seems to only be Greg Berhalter, of all people. I know, right? <laughs> it seems to be only Greg Berhalter at the night, uh, at the time. That, who is? If I was Greg, I'd be like, uh, "You're, hey, you're about to go in the team. Yeah, I'm all you got. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Look who's that? Yeah. Hey, Gio, come over here. Let me explain to you what I want you to do. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't even be on the pitch. <laughs> you know, <laughs> hit him with one of them. So the uh, so the, uh, the roster stuff. I'll bring it up uh, in a second. But um, I mean, the, uh, familiar names. I mean, we we had some. Uh, players drop out uh, due to injury. Uh, Josh Sargent, Josh uh, Sargent one of them. Uh, who else? 
um, that was injured. Uh, that uh, uh, Johnny Cardozo. Cardozo. Right? I'm pretty yeah. sure Johnny Cardozo is out. Yeah, yeah. So the uh, so when it comes to uh, what the, so, so, t- the the biggest I guess shock or surprise. Um, uh, Gio Reyna and then also Tyler Adams. Tyler Adams has uh, be, uh, had a, a surgery on his hamstring. I don't he, think he's gonna get too many minutes, but he's in the camp. Yeah, so he got um, uh, he got called up, and some people are kind of uh, questioning that as well, given um, you know the given the the, the situation of, of like, do, do you call up players that will definitely play versus uh, players that you're trying to reintegrate into the team mm-hmm. um and tyler adams obviously uh cap you know been captain for a while of, of the of the u.s men's national team so i get uh so i get the call up and he's he's been playing in the uh like bournemouth 2 or whatever like the the, yeah, the lower PL2, pl2 or maybe the u23s i know he, they have the pl u23 so he he's been playing there uh and getting some time but this uh when when i more than anything when i look at the the, the usmnt roster especially in this game against jamaica i'm not too uh shocked or surprised but well, then there's one person you want to see though is there one person in particular like yo i want to see this person ball out um or just get minutes uh, i mean look Dest is not going to play in the first game, I think, because he's still suspended. Because he, he got suspended, yeah. The um, I mean, who do I want? I mean, I guess, honestly, one of my main things is seeing how well Christian Pulisic is basically dominating Serie A. He has argue, arguably been the best player transferred in to Serie A this season. And, I, I, I don't think I could disagree with that. And uh, I want to see a... A more uh, confident, I want to see a more poised Christian Pulisic. I mean, Nations League is usually when he steps up. Um, you know, you, we remember the games against Mexico. Remember mm-hmm. the, the, the 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 man the, in the mirror, man in the mirror, the the penalty he scored, the, the 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 just the goals he scored. There's something that happens when Christian Pulisic is wearing a U.S. Men's National Team jersey that is. You know, we see him celebrate at Milan, and we've, mm-hmm. we've seen him. You know, you know, kind of. Show some uh, respect to Chelsea when he right, scored right. a goal because he obviously was a yeah, he's a, yeah, really, really great Chelsea player. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's something when he's the U.S. Men's National Team uh, to me is the where Christian Pulisic sees a not only uh, a duty and responsibility to to growing the game uh, in this country and then growing the brand of the, the the of the U.S. Men's National Team and U.S. Soccer to the rest of the world and show them like, yo, we got. We got ballers here, so yeah. he is the and he, he's not the captain, but I think he also shows that it, this is his this is his house. Yes, and he has captained the team mm-hmm. uh, uh, in the past, but the so he is probably the main person that uh, I'm uh, I'm looking for just some like good performances. The the game against Jamaica. Jamaica is missing. Uh, um, Mikel Antonio, the Leon three Bailey. best players, uh, Damari Gray. Gray. They're missing. Leon Bailey is out for disciplinary reasons. Mikel Antonio is injured, and Damari Gray's out because he's suspended. Okay, and there's there's more players that are there's out. More. Yeah, I saw a list, and it was like yeah. seven or eight uh, guys: Amari Bell, Shamar Nicholson, and Trevante Stewart. Yeah, so but the three best players. They're not gonna be there. So you. So we gotta win. <laughs> we gotta win this one. <laughs> so that's why I'm not. I'm almost like you know. It it, it definitely. Uh, it's a little disappointing that they're missing those players because it would have been a better game. It, it not only would have been a better game, but it, it would have been a better uh, um, test for the U.S. Right. national team. So that's my uh, only uh, uh, only concern. But you know, again, I expect a victory, and and it should be, you know, not necessarily resounding. But given that Jamaica's missing these players, I would imagine that the U.S. Uh, should do well. I'm uh, interested to see Balogun. You know, hasn't been playing all that great at, at Monaco lately. Uh, but he started out hot. I'm excited to see him. I think most uh, you actually stopped on the perfect player, Joe Scally. Okay. You know, without Serginio Des being able to play, I think it's going to be nice to see what our back line looks like. Whoa, what's on the right hand side? Oh no! We'll blur that or something. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> Yo, the comment section on Twitter is bro. Some people really love America. <laughs> you know. <laughs> There's I mean, some women very excited about this <laughs> game. Luckily, Whoa. it wasn't complete nudity, no. but it was. Which is allowed on TikTok, <laughs> Twitter, or X, but definitely not on our show. No, it's not allowed on TikTok, no. uh, but that's the one we got to ban. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>
Oh, uh, wow. Oh um, <laughs> just a lot of room in that trunk of that car. Just you know? glad <laughs> glad the show's alive right now. That's all. You know? Hey, just, hey, Miguelito, mark that one. Yeah. Mark that, a timestamp. Hey, okay, you know so, what? And so also zoom throw in. it up on the Patreon. <laughs> Let them see. They get so to see it. Zoom in to the side there, right when it comes Wow, up. what's yeah, on the right? Yeah. Um, but Joe Scali, I'm interested. I mean, Christopher Lund also I'm a big fan of. Um, or that was, was that Horvath? Horvath. Might be the best goalkeeper right now. He's form wise. Yeah, where's he playing? Actually, he's at Cardiff know. City. Okay, he got, he got transferred in the in the January. He was he was at Nottingham Forest. Yeah, uh, and technically, the- <laughs> <laughs> they gave him a kit. I think that's the best. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm interested to see the back line. I, I want to know uh, what's what as we get closer to Nations League. What is really our best? You know, Tim Ream. He's up a little bit up there in age. Yeah, is he still the guy? He's not really the guy right now in at Fulham. So. A lot of questions. All right. So, yeah. Uh, so, the, uh, obviously, Nations League uh, starts today. The game is at 7 p.m. So, by, basically, by the time you listen to this, you, you know, we, we probably already know the result. Um, but the uh, – so, this is the Nations League semifinal. And then we're uh, – the, the winner of Panama-Mexico. And then the, the final will be, I believe, Sunday, right? Mm-hmm. Or, or, or Yeah, I believe Sunday. So – the uh, in in Dallas um, and uh, so so I mean look I, I, it feels like we're setting up for another U.S. Mexico uh, game and uh, did you see the comments from Chucky Lozano? There's been a lot. Uh, no, Hercules uh, uh, Gomez uh, I think believe no, Hercules Gomez retweeted it, but they, uh, uh, Chucky Lozano did um, did an interview with the guy I I, I forgot his name, but the guy who uh, interviewed Chicharito. That said, um, that when the, the famous uh, Chicharito quote, um, the uh, chingonas, see, sí, uh, porque imaginémonos cosas chingonas or yeah, something yeah, like that, yeah, or yeah. whatever, um, about beating, about winning Mexico, winning the World Cup, and the so and Chico Lozano uh, provided several, uh, a lot of smoke. Hit him with the quotes. Oh, uh, smoke, smoke for uh, uh, Tata Martino, um, and basically said that you know the that that he treated us like uh, like children. That he was he, he basically it, uh, had like a military style oversight of the team and that it didn't work and it didn't um you know the, the, it didn't it didn't resonate. Did with you hear the what team. Edson Alvarez said? No, I didn't. He claims that he believes that the Martino purposely threw the game against Argentina. Ah, oh, bro. Wow. I mean, really? Are we doing this? Yo, he did in some interview. I just saw the clip of it earlier. Yeah, yeah. Where he said, "Hey, we were good friends. We would talk." Tactics at we the had, World Cup, obviously. Yeah, right? we had a very close relationship, you know, where we would talk tactics, we would respond to each other's texts very quickly. We were very close. He said, he, he, see, he, I think he intimated that he wasn't very close with a lot of people on the team, uh-huh. but with him, he was. And maybe it's because he played in Europe, or he asked a lot about the tactics at Ajax. That was like a big part of the relationship. Uh, and then when it came to the game match against Argentina, I'm not sure if I remember this correctly, but Edson didn't start, and apparently. Not that went cold on him, wouldn't respond to his text, wouldn't answer Whoa, what was going on. Ghosted him. And he believes it was on purpose so that he didn't field the best team against Argentina because of his connection to Argentina. Now, very I don't yeah, know. that's a crazy <laughs> a wild allegation. Wild allegation. <laughs> and also, don't know if I believe it either. Yeah, I don't. I mean, look, people, uh, you know, uh, after, uh, you know, like, it's, it's easy in hindsight to try to figure out, like, why he made the decisions he made. And, you know, we saw Mexico at the World Cup. They didn't get out of the group. They did not go well. People were not right. were not happy. We went to the U.S.-Mexico game mm-hmm. uh, at, at Azteca, and and then the entire crowd was just, uh, from minute one, they were like, fuera tata, fuera tata. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they were not happy with him, even during those qualifiers. Mm-hmm. So um, That was a nil-nil draw, right? Yeah, yeah. So that was uh, so you can understand the the frustration on everybody's part from the fans uh, uh, to the players themselves. But to even though, yeah, Tata Martino is Argentinian, has coached the Argentinian national team to call into question his integrity. Uh, integrity. That's a tough one. Is is pretty wild. And, and from Edson Alvarez, is one of the better players on the team. Right, right, right. You know, the guy has got a stellar career right now in the Premier League. Mm-hmm. For him to make that claim was a little rough. It's a little rough, yeah. I mean, but you know, or at least to intimate it. 
now we're here, you know, the, the, the comments from Chucky Lozano as well were, were, I think were at least fair. They were, like, critical. He didn't like his, like, coaching style and, and management style. Right. Edson's uh, like, he hates, he hates me, he called. <laughs> like, he hates me, bro. <laughs> Yo, la raza, he don't like us, bro. He ain't one of us. <laughs> nah. <laughs> so, uh, so pretty wild. So, but, but I think it feels like we're setting uh, uh, up to, to that game. Uh, I think uh, it's going to be U.S. Panama in the final. Wow, oh, bro. That'd be, that'd be wild. I mean, look. I mean, look, I find it entertaining seeing yeah, the, the yeah. Me- Mexico Twitter uh, uh, getting upset at <laughs> their team. I, it, it's fun for me, uh, but uh, but we'll see what uh, ends up happening. Up next, we have Ben White has made some news by leaving the English national team. Now, Alexis, you said you've got a little more inside info. I haven't seen too much news about what specifically happened. Well, he didn't leave. Kind of, he, 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 didn't, was, he was kicked out. He had uh, a do. No, that was in the World Cup. Yeah. Uh, well, he okay. left on his okay. own terms in the World Cup, uh, but he apparently he had a dude tell the English uh, the national team whether it was directly to Southgate or whoever calls mm-hmm. that Ben White would like to remove his name from consideration, yeah. uh, where he probably would have been chosen. Now, there's two sides to it, right? There's the side that okay, he's not starting at right back. You're probably gonna have Trent Alexander Arnold. Even when he was down bad, he was the guy that. Uh, Southgate liked. Where else is he in the depth? I forget who else is above him in the depth chart at right back. So there's the there's that. Okay, maybe he's not going to start, and maybe that's why. And I know for a lot of people that's got to be frustrating, right? You go to a World Cup, or you know you're you're there and you're training every day. You're away from your family, uh, your your significant other, and I know apparently he's very close with his uh, partner. They just got married, uh, and then you're not playing. You're like, why am I here, dog? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, th- that's a common, uh, you know, we saw the thing with, with Giorena. Giorena was almost uh, sent, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sent home. Um, but, but he actually, he did did the, go. The, but- yeah, the stuff with Ben White. Ben White, um, he 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 has said this in, he just said this in an interview about not not watching football. This is a long time ago. A long ago. time ago, yeah. He said on his spare time, he doesn't really watch football. Right. So Which, like. I can't blame the dude. I can't. I can't. It's shocking to us because you're like, "What is all we do?" <laughs> it's like we're, but this is his job. You yeah, know what I mean? If we were just at home, all like on our spare time, watching comedy specials all the time. Imagine you had a night off from doing stand up, and instead of spending time with your baby and your significant <laughs> other, you just <laughs> popped up an old special of someone else's. We'd right. be like, "Dog, you gotta get help." You know? <laughs> uh, why? Uh, you know these carrot top specials aren't gonna watch themselves. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> I don't care if I see this one 15 times. <laughs> so, uh, so that was uh, what we have on screen because, but, but so uh, reportedly, Ben this was w- in the World Cup. Yes, yeah. In the World Cup, apparently, uh, Gareth Southgate's assistant in front of the rest of the team, kind of, uh, what do they call it? Dressed down. Yeah, you don't undress. Someone. You undress. <laughs> you undress. You undress. <laughs> Go back to the Joe Scally photo real quick. Uh, <laughs> speaking of undress, no, he dressed him. He he had whatever. He he was disrespectful. Yeah, undress. Least. No, undressed is correct. It is. Yeah, Verbal, yeah, yeah, yeah you verbally works. undressed someone. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, damn. Uh, <laughs> well, everyone. I guess coming from me, no one would assume. <laughs> I mean the, that way. Uh, but yeah, apparently he was disrespectful, and I, I guess. Part of it, well, first of all, the assistant, Steve Holland, has absolutely denied it. Okay. So that needs to be said. This is all alleged. No one knows for sure. I think part of why I said I have a little bit more sort of an understanding of it is because if you notice, there was a huge campaign to show that Ben White re-signed around the same time that mm-hmm. this news was going to drop. So Arsenal clearly has his back. The The fact that he doesn't watch football every day has led a lot of people to suggest that maybe he doesn't care. Right. And that he's not as committed to football because he's not watching it every day. And I get that in a place like England, you can't say, oh, I don't watch football casually. Yeah. If you're a footballer, to so many people, that just goes against the code of being a footballer. But Ben White has been basically been playing with a slight knee injury all season. He's very rarely out, injured. Yeah. Um, and played well. Played well. And, in fact, the the training team, uh, Mikel Arteta has told the trainers at the at training – that you have to watch Ben White because he won't tell you if he's hurt. You have to watch. You have to suss it out yourself. Yeah, yeah. So he wants to do his job. The, ca- the guy's a maniac. And yeah. apparently this is this is all a fighter that comes from, I believe it was Ornstein who who mentioned this, or was somebody who's... Uh, at who, The Athletic. Yeah, yeah, at The Athletic. Somebody who, who follows, a beat writer for Arsenal, who follows Arsenal very closely, has said that the training staff previous to all this has said, if you send like 10 hours of footage to Ben White... 
he'll know all 10 hours of it like by the like by the letter of it yeah. the next day in training he'll know his opponents so he's very clearly dedicated to his job whatever happened with the national team had to be bad enough where he's like, bro, then I'm not coming until that guy's right, right, gone right. or until a new coach comes in. Yeah, so, look, it's not the uh, level of attention that, uh, you know, I think, uh, like, I, he's like, I'm trying to think. Look, it's clearly— I think it's because he looks like he's on Love Island. <laughs> I think that's why people are disrespectful <laughs> about it. It is a calculated decision on ben, White, ben White's part where, yeah, maybe he felt like some— one of his boundaries was crossed, and he's like, yo, don't even call me in, right? So we, we're probably never— Which you can, I can respect that, right? If someone's yeah. like, no, 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 my integrity, no, I'm not going to let right. you so talk I, to me Right, so I that. respect that he's saying that, and I don't take it as he's not interested in playing the game or mm -hmm. not playing football. That I, I Literally, I don't take that, that, that a way lot of people at all. Are, a lot of people are starting to add 2 plus 2 plus yeah, 2 plus I 2 just, in a way where it's not. Uh, yeah, it must be something must have happened where he, you know, maybe he expects some sort of— uh, uh, apology or some sort of acknowledgement of his experience or his feelings. But, uh, uh, you know, former coaches, it seems like older people are like, get him out of here. What uh, Harry Redknapp was like, uh, Southgate said the door was still open. It, Harry Redknapp, quote, closed the door on his mush, which I hope that's his face. <laughs> we, had a, we don't know. <laughs> I don't know what body part mush is. You know what I mean? Because I know what a fanny pack is here. <laughs> yeah, 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 I don't yeah, know yeah. what y'all doing uh -huh. over there. <laughs> And if you would have added a wider mush, I would have said, "Okay, I'm a, I'm not 100 percent sure anymore." You okay, know, was that just was just the lady next to Joe Scali? Yeah, yeah, we got to bring right showing a mush. <laughs> Get the bring Joe Scali back, back up here. Back up. Don't do that, please don't do that. Uh, for me, I think the most important part is you. Whatever the issue is, if Southgate said the door's still open, then and we don't know it, then it must be, yeah, there was something happened, but. It, it hasn't been resolved, so I'm going to leave both doors open. And to all the old heads who are like, how dare you say no to England? How dare you, blah, blah, blah. You don't know the situation. Yeah, exactly. The man's been a stellar, you know, citizen this whole time. Yeah, the, uh, you know, I remember reading uh, Grant Wall's book, Masters of Modern Soccer, where he has a, a chapter uh, about uh, Roberto uh, Mar Martinez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, back when he was coach of Belgium. Uh, back when he was coaching, I think he might have, yeah, I think he just started coaching yeah, Belgium yeah, yeah. at the time. Because he was like the future of right, coaching. But he was, I'm not a future board. Uh, but so he <laughs> he apparently um, uh, he he mentioned in, in the book uh, Roberto does about you know his obsession with the game. So he's like this is the opposite oh, is of the uh, multiple Ben White. TV story? Multiple TV. This so, is crazy. So though. this is, and Roberto Martinez he, he told his wife that he had to install a second TV at home. So well, even though he has an L shaped couch. Right, right. So she sits on one side and has her own TV, <laughs> and he sits on the other L, the and, other part. And he's analyzing he has his own TV. And he's analyzing a game or watching another game. And or, in the book, he explains the reason I did this is because I want to spend quality time <laughs> with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, Could you I'm, I'm in the room. You feel me? <laughs> Hold my hand. I might squeeze when a goal is scored. <laughs> okay, I'm, baby. I'm just, I'm, I'm holding your hand, but I'm watching these one-two patterns that, I'm, <laughs> yeah. that I've coached into my players. Mm, interesting. <laughs> With the defensive midfielders. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're right. I'm interrupting you from watching your shows. <laughs> so she no, has I'm a little arm while he is watching the Champions League semifinal. <laughs> Yo, and he's watching game day, not even live TV. <laughs> my man, he's watching training. Yo, <laughs> so, homie is enhancing <laughs> on, on the defensive drills. Okay. Well, his wife is watching, I don't know, the wedding video? <laughs> and you're not a part of that, Roberto? He's, he's, he's drinking out of a cup that says husband of the year. <laughs> yeah. You know he is. <laughs> he's like, look at us. Yeah, I spent so many hours with my wife. God knows what she's in there doing. This is what family's all about, Bro, babe. <laughs> I'm a committed significant other, dude. <laughs> okay. Husband of the year. <laughs> so obviously some interesting stuff going on over um with the national teams but on the club level we have the u.s open cup start um, mm, a few don garber's favorite the, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the don garber cup i think that's what we got <laughs> oh they should do that <laughs> <laughs> um but we had some big upsets none bigger than el farolito fc winning a match in the tournament they're 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 known for their burritos more than anything else. They're, uh, <laughs> they're associated with the, the um, burrito shop, famous one over in San Francisco, known for the Mission Burritos. But Burrito FC, guys, are they, are they going to win it all? They're going to be hosting the cup? What do you guys think? Bro, uh, first of all, El Farolito is an incredible burrito shop. Have you ever eaten there? I have not. 
All right, so there's three famous ones. La Taqueria, mm -hmm. uh, El Farolito, and Cancun. Okay. C-A-N hyphen C-U-N. Um, I've been to all. Cancun is the one place I went to where they sell a regular burrito and a super burrito. It's a much bigger, more heavily filled one. Oh, wow. And I went up and I was like, yo, let I me. I kind of pieced that together okay. when you mentioned, you mentioned the super. Yeah, yeah. I walked up and I go, yo, let me get a, uh, let me get a, you know, whatever, a carne asada burrito. And he's like, okay, uh, carne asada super burrito. And I was like, well, I didn't order a super burrito. He goes, come on, man. <laughs> I was like, oh, you're right. <laughs> it's not even an, it's not even like, an insult at that point. <laughs> no, he's like, come on, man. He's like, yo, you know what? That's on me, <laughs> yeah. but not for not being truthful to who yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was using my instincts in the moment. <laughs> I had my, you know, my wife is my conscience <laughs> yeah. sometimes, and I got to stop that. Right. She sits uh, watching one show, and I <laughs> fat shame out the window. <laughs> That's what we do, man. Have an L-shaped couch, uh, but el, la taqueria, uh, el farolito is absolutely incredible. I didn't know they had a soccer team. You know who does though? The fans of Portland Timbers. <laughs> the Portland Timber. Uh, you know, so uh, with the U.S. Open Cup, some teams are fielding the the first teams, mm -hmm. and some teams are fi fielding the MLS Next Pro teams, mm -hmm. and so and some teams are fielding the back of the house. Bro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, man, they, you know, they they have it. They didn't even shower after work, no, bro. They, their kids are the white <laughs> aprons and the whites that the chefs were out there in Crocs, my G. My, so they and they got a, a big win uh, at Providence Park as well. So it's not like it was just uh, at home or or whatever. So is did Eric Keating send us a video from this yes, game? Yes, yes, our friend Eric Keating. I saw he was at a game. I didn't know it was from this Portland. game. We didn't get permission to play it. We're not going to air, right? air it. But it was uh, it was a, a, a video of um, Harvey Neville getting uh, his second yellow yes. and getting uh, you know getting the red card and getting oh, sent oh, off that, the pitch. That's, okay, so, so now I remember why we're not going to play it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, when, uh, you know, when the, uh, the coach's son mm -hmm. um, uh, has his first uh, has his debut mm -hmm. for the club and then gets also gets sent off. You know what? It's going to make a little bit of news, yeah. okay? Isn't it fitting, though, that someone British loses to a well-seasoned burrito? <laughs> <laughs> you know, doesn't it just kind of feel... El Farolito was too spicy yeah. on the pitch, bro. He's like, it's not fair, man. There's <laughs> all types of flavors. <laughs> the so... word complex comes to mind, fam. <laughs> I think there's pepper in this. <laughs> I mean, it's illegal, no? It's just salt and vinegar. It's so we like to use. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, in, in, impressive stuff. Look, for even for El Farolito to beat an MLS Next Pro team uh, uh, says a lot. El Farolito I mean, look, well, let, let's just keep it real. F. Adelito on, on Twitter right now has 971 followers. Bro. They play in NPSL. Yo, um, up the burritos, dog. Up the burrito. <laughs> El burrito sabanero. <laughs> El burrito sabanero. <laughs> El farolito <laughs> sabanero. <laughs> farolito <laughs> de Belén. Anyway, <laughs> it's a classic. Everybody. Yeah, yo, everybody knows it. <laughs> yo, right now, there's like three Puerto Rican dudes bopping in their cars. <laughs> okay, we all grew up. Yeah. That's our music, all right? Uh, so, no, a, a, huge, uh, a huge win. And uh, look, some of these victories in U.S. Open Cup... Um, uh, you know, Vermont Green also won uh, their game. Bernie Sanders gave them a shout out, so that was that was pretty cool. How about this? If El Farolito wins the U.S. Open Cup, you have to eat a burrito in your famous burrito eating style on this show. <laughs> wow, a, let's do it. Let's a super do burrito. It. Yeah, a super. I mean, well, come on, man. <laughs> you got a harmonica a burrito a, on a, this show. According to it, like this is how I eat burritos at all times. <laughs> uh, but I'll, if they win, then I will. I will do it for just for the vibes, <laughs> yo, for the, for the views. The fans have been waiting for this since day one. That was the day this show was technically born. <laughs> okay, uh, so shout out to El Farolito. Uh, incredible stuff. Uh, uh, a, a big, big win, and look, and th these are what this is what the U.S. Open Cup is about. We want to have these uh, uh, incredible stories. I would imagine that the Timbers probably wish they could have uh, fielded their first team. Um, Absolutely, uh, but <laughs> but this is this is, uh, this is how it is. That's how it en ends up. So uh, so shout out to Ed Farolito. All right, so now let's get to our interview because uh, you know we got we got to bring in uh, what just. 
one of the most handsome people. Oh my god! <laughs> if you're handsome and you work in soccer, I mean that's it. you got. <laughs> you're gonna get. A, you got a green light to be on this show at all times. Uh, you're gonna get uh, <laughs> harassed on this show. <laughs> so, uh, hey, look, we're upfront about it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we told you. Uh, also, if you are a fan of chiseled jawlines, I suggest you screen cap <laughs> any part of this interview coming up. <laughs> now this, this is an honor. Yes, finally, okay. just. Three of the handsomest men, handsomest men. You know what? To- when, when I think of the two sexiest men in morning, uh-huh. morning TV, <laughs> I think of myself first. All right, yeah. And obviously. then this guy eventually gets him. <laughs> he, he, he crowbars himself yeah. in the list. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is an absolute honor. There's Very often we talk about we wish more people in American media got involved in football in a different level. And this dude's like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> How about you buy a team, my guy? Yeah, yeah we're uh, we're almost there. We have yeah. just a, a couple a couple nickels uh, to make up right. uh, to, to catch up. To, you know, we to, need to be able to afford to buy a soccer ball. But then comes a team. <laughs> we'll get there. But, but this this is an absolute honor. I mean, you know, you if you're not watching this guy in the morning, what are you doing? You yes. got to start your day off with a smile <laughs> and then flip the channel and watch me. Uh, <laughs> absolute incredible. I mean, what an honor, Mark Consuelos, everybody. Mark, what is up, man? Oh, well, thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. This is uh, like an honor, and we were joking around before, um, you know, before we started recording. But yes, you are um, just a, a legend in the game, uh, actor, being on on television. Yeah, but most importantly, bro, you're gorgeous. You're go- <laughs> <laughs> That's a. It's good to be a gorgeous, uh, uh, you know, football club owner. Yeah. Um, but that we were teasing you about the fact that our wives uh, also, just like most uh, most wives in America probably, yeah, yeah. also have a, a big uh, big crush on you. And uh, you hear this uh, all the time. But, you know, they, they watch you on, on, on live uh, uh, with Kelly and Mark. And so th- th- we, I just, I, it's not really a question. It's just, bro, we just want to make sure you know. <laughs> you get your flowers, dog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we want to give you. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well deserved. <laughs> This is the best intro to any podcast I've ever done. <laughs> Dude, you know, based on show- 30, 30 seconds, I'm coming back for sure. Exactly. Nice. That's how that's how we uh, grease up the guests, yeah. and then, then we hit them with the hard-hitting questions. I, I do have to ask, because you are someone who obviously tries really hard to stay in great shape, and you're doing a wonderful job of it, but when you're, you're now a football team owner. Do they sometimes, yes. when you walk out there, do they think you are a one of the retired players coming back? <laughs> Together. What's, so <laughs> What's so funny is um, I went to go visit the club last summer. It was the last game we, we had to win when we were in um, the fifth division. And I was there for like a few days before, and they took me to the st- our stadium. And, you know, I was just messing around, kicking the ball. I played many years. Um, I'm not that good. I wasn't that good. But uh, um, I, I played a lot. I played, I played a lot of football. And they said, you want to take a penalty kick? I'm like, yeah, I want to take a penalty kick. And it's a view. I mean, this state, this grass is just like a putting green, and it's kind of you know, yeah. it looks like it kind of cam- canters to the side, so it drains beautifully. It's pristine. It's got the li- it's got the the lines, you know, like the, every ten yards there's that a different groove. And, and I'm like in this twenty five thousand seat stadium. It's empty. It's me and the other a couple of the other owners, and they put the ball down and I run up to kick it, and I pulled my quad. Oh. <laughs> Man, the, the ball felt like a rock, and I pulled it. I had just gotten off a plane that morning. I flew all night to get there for this to, to see the stadium, but it was the kind of pull where it, it hurt to walk. You know what I mean? Like I was like limping. Yeah, it's like yeah. a nice, uh, nice grade two. Yeah, uh, strain. Yeah. <laughs> the physio was like, "You're six, no, no. six weeks, dude." <laughs> no, they they sent me to the physio. Did they really? <laughs> They should have. They should have pulled, the, ca- carried you out on the stretcher yeah, with the yeah. with the <laughs> fans started booing like you're wasting time. <laughs> so I had it. You know, they took me for a tour of all the stadium. I'm limping up the stairs. They're like, "Mark, you're messed. You're, you're hurt." I go, "No, no, no. It's fine. It's just a, just a thing." And they said they got Michele, the physio, who's amazing. He worked with the national team. I go to his studio slash center. It's amazing. He's got gadgets and electronic stuff, and they start working on. They start working on my quad. And I'm in my underwear, and his, his whole family comes in, my wife, daughter, they all work there. I'm taking, like, like fan photos with, with like, the family. 
But <laughs> it didn't. Um, yeah, no. most people don't get injured on business trips, yeah, yeah. Mark. <laughs> and if you do, you don't get you don't get to meet the physio and the family. That's pretty dope. To answer That's your amazing. question. To answer your question. I, I knew that soccer is not a game that you can just you know that you can just kind of just just full swing going. You gotta you gotta you gotta play a little bit. You gotta play a little bit. And a few years ago, I was in Vancouver doing a show, and they had a celebrity game at the Vancouver Whitecaps Stadium. Beautiful stadium. Yeah, BC Park. Yeah. Yes, and it was a run-and-gun game. Run-and-gun. You know, those celebrity games, nobody's playing defense. You're, everybody's sprinting. <laughs> and in the first six minutes, I pulled both growings and a calf. <laughs> Jeez. I know. Well, how about this? I only got one growing. That's really impressive. <laughs> My goodness. Mark. I, yeah, they, they get intense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see did you see that uh clip of Kaka getting uh slide tackled by that kid speed? You know what I mean? <laughs> Kaka. I would, have, I would have been pissed off. Yeah. yeah, very valid. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't do that to Cacao nor Mark Consuelos. Yeah. All right, yeah. we uh, we're putting it out there. Mark C- Consuelos. <laughs> <laughs> Ka- Ka- yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, like like you mentioned yeah, you are um uh one of the owners of, of campo basso and and it's a, a a miraculous story in uh in italian uh, uh calcio uh history i mean just uh, uh two back-to-back uh, uh promotions and then uh and then tr- trying to get to uh, uh, serie c serie c right now uh yeah, that's uh, if i'm correct yeah, so it's actually actually it's um, we were relegated from from uh, from C down to F two years ago before we bought the team and the team was disbanded and yeah. uh, the group that I'm a part of said and we were part of another ownership group of another team in Italy a Serie B team and my my the, the principal Matt Rosetta called me and he said listen um, I know we're part of Ascoli and we're a minority group but we can become we can become full stakeholders of this team that just was disbanded. They've been relegated from C to F. So we dropped two levels and I, I said, okay, it's August, man. Like, don't we start soon? He goes, yeah, we start in 12 days. Said, okay, do we, do we, do You're like, do you have... need anyone to take penalties? <laughs> I said, do you, do we have a team? He goes, no. I said, do we have a coach? He goes, no. I said, do we have a sporting director? He goes, no. I said, do we have a stadium? He goes, yes, we, we have a stadium, but the grass is like two feet high. They, it's in disrepair. I said, and you want to buy this team? He goes, yeah. I go, let's do it. Let's do it. And Man, so he, trust. He, 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 <laughs> yeah, he, was, he had connections. He was able to mount this whole situation, get on the field for the first game, and we won 38 out of 40 games in, in, in F. We were promoted last year, and we're going to go for our second promotion this year. Uh, That's incredible. It is, yeah. I, I think, and- yeah. We checked, and uh, we checked, and um, it's, it'll be the first time in Italy that an ownership group started from the beginning, not mid-season, and was able to, fingers crossed, get promoted twice. Right, right. Since, um, you know, consecutively in the history of Italian football. Now we should probably. I mean, this is why we have you on, since you were so willing to buy this team with so little information. Can I pitch you on Cooligans FC? <laughs> Cooligans uh, FC. Yeah, we have a team uh, that plays. It's a co-ed team that plays <laughs> at Brooklyn Bridge Park. Uh-huh. It is all uh, mostly stand-up comedians. Uh, who, and the skill level who are usually is <laughs> lower than you just thought. Yeah, yeah. Who are usually playing uh, a little bit hungover from the night prior. Uh, so <laughs> just something yeah. to consider. Here's what you'll love. We haven't been relegated yet. <laughs> now. <laughs> also, there is no relegation in our league. Right, right. But it's still. No, no. It, He's got to fight that in the deck himself. <laughs> Don't give him the negatives. We talk positives only. No, so, uh, you know, we've we spoken to uh, a lot of uh, owners in the game, whether it's an ML, uh, owner of an MLS team or owner of uh, uh, teams in Scotland. Yep. There's a there's an interesting, uh, you know, I, I think people learn things very quickly from uh, being being an owner. Uh, the, it, we, we all know the, I don't know, like the, the history of Italian calcio. And we, we've, we've heard of the, the Berlusconis and we've heard the, 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 the wild, the, the, just the craziness of what it's like to be uh, an owner in, in Serie A. But in, in, you know, going from 
F to uh, and then trying to build this club up to get to Serie A someday. Why have uh, as being an owner in Italy? What have you learned? What are the oh. at least one of the experiences? Something that surprised you? Because there's always something kind of like, wow, I did not know this would be part of the job. The rumors are true, my friends. The rumors are true. <laughs> <laughs> um, you couldn't write. You couldn't write some of this stuff. Um, you know, I grew up in Italy, so I was such a fan of. of of Serie A and it's heyday, you know what I mean? Like in, in, in during Serie A's heyday before there was, you know, such an interest and so, and, and, and the EPL was so massive as it was, um, you know, the players used to go to Serie A, but let me see one of the things that we've dealt with, uh, this year, um, this year, our, our, uh, referee consultant, okay. Our referee yeah, consultant. It's already great. All right. All right. I like this. <laughs> He comes in and he tells the guys, hey, listen, um, this referee has a tendency to call penalty kicks. Uh, this referee doesn't call penalty kicks. This referee is, you know, he'll, he'll, if you speak to him, he'll, he'll card you quickly. He just kind of gives the guys a scout report on, right. on, the, on, the, uh, on the referee. So we win the game. I'm happy. We win the game. But then we get a call from the league or from the referee association. They said, listen, your referee consultant um, accosted the referees back in the in the locker room area. <laughs> wouldn't let them out of their area. So now we're finding you. We're finding you, and we're closing porte chiuse. That means your next game has to be played with no fans. No fans <laughs> behind closed doors. <laughs> Which means that's a that's a fifty to to one hundred thousand dollar hit in Whoa. in yeah. eight. And we're like, wait, the next game is against our rivals and we're neck and neck first and second place. Oh. We're going to get our biggest gate. So just having to deal with that and massage that and, you know, I'll, by the way, let me just preface us by saying all this is alleged. Our referee consultant. Right, right, right. I'm not <laughs> yeah. saying you did. I'm not saying we got to add that to the board. Allegedly. <laughs> yeah. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. But we were able to work it out. We, we had one of our cup games. They allowed us to, to close our doors, which we weren't It was a midweek game, cup game. Gotcha. Gotcha. We were, we were getting a third of the gate anyway, and they allowed our, we were able to do that. But guys, it is, it is it's so Italian. It's so, it's, it's so well put, Italian. Well, <laughs> I'm not yeah. Italian, but I feel like I do just fine in <laughs> Serie F. I'd be like, oh, yeah, really? Because I got a guy who told me that never happened. And we could go back and, and forth. The, the interesting thing is, I mean, we, we, you know, we can joke about it sort of lightly about, like, you know, the history and, and sort of corruption. And we've seen, you know, even or this. just a different way of doing business sometimes. Right, right. But then, but the interesting thing is we, in, in the lower leagues, there's no VAR. There's no, no oversight. Of, it's still back in the, back in the day, there's that one ref. He makes the decisions. We, yeah, what we, they see is what, what happens. <laughs> so, so you have to, you know, it's it's old school, even though it's we're in the modern uh, era. So, you there's a there's a certain way, like you said, there's a certain way of doing business. There's you got to navigate way it business. a different way. Look, we're all trying to succeed. Yeah. Nobody trying to break the rules. So, I get it. No, right? Was was this a dream of yours to be a club owner? Because I mean, you're obviously killing it in the entertainment business. This feels like. Such a heavy, stressful job of being involved <laughs> in a club. I'm sure there's great highs. We've all watched the Sunderland Till I Dies, and we've all seen the, you know, uh, Welcome to Wrexham. There's obviously some real positive moments. But most of what I see is Ryan Reynolds and uh, Rob McElhinney <laughs> rubbing their faces. <laughs> Why do you want to be in this, dude? <laughs> I got to tell you, and this is not, I'm not, try, I'm not being like hyperbolic or anything like that. Um, it is one of the greatest experiences of my of my adult professional career is being part of this this group and and part of this city and getting their team back from extinction it is it is all the things you're you saying that you're rubbing your head a lot but i got to tell you it it's so um, meaningful and fulfilling I, and 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 it, it's the greatest fantasy league you'll ever want to play. <laughs> That's so, yeah. I mean, you're yeah, playing yeah. like live it's, fantasy. It, the fantasy is, uh, <laughs> you know, these guys' is real jobs and, yeah, lives, yeah, yeah. and you're <laughs> responsible for, for their well-being. One of the things about Welcome to Wrexham, my wife very, very lightly was watching and started. She watched uh, um, 
one of the, the all or nothings with uh, Mourinho when he was at Tottenham. Yeah. And she was like, I think I like this Mourinho guy. I'm like, I don't think you read context clues very well. <laughs> this guy is pretty rough on everyone. <laughs> this is not a great guy to love. But she started to kind of get involved. And then we saw Ryan Reynolds' wife, uh, Blake Lively, start to tweet out in all caps and like, oh, my effing Christ, this yeah, yeah. is amazing. She started getting involved. Will we see a time where we see your wife <laughs> on the, on, in the suite, in the owner suite at Campo Basso, uh, just really kind of getting in? Because if I'm not mistaken, she's from Jersey. I know she gets the yelling and going, and going crazy <laughs> for a sporting event. I know that's in her blood. So I'm, I'm the Ryan Reynolds. She's the Rob McElhaney. Okay. Uh, <laughs> good, good. You got a good partner there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Rob, Rob is Rob is from Philly, and Kelly's yeah. from South Jersey, which is she's like ten or fifteen minutes from Philly. Okay, so she's essentially yeah. from Philly, and they do All it right. different down there. Like uh-huh. they're, they're the you know so, and what's interesting about Kelly is her people. She's Italian, are from the town our biggest rival and who are training us in second place. She's from her people are from that city. Oh my God. You bought the giants and she's an Eagles fan. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh my God. Wow. What a yes. <laughs> difficult yes. situation. And, to be in, um, but all right. Loves it. You know, she, it, it, she, whenever she walks into a room and she hears me talk, speaking in Italian, She's like, I, she just turns around and walks the other way. Cause she knows I'm on a, you know, on a, on a, like a, a big zoom call or transfer window and we're making deals. And you know, we're, you know, our guy's supposed to meet the general manager at his office. Now he's meeting somebody else at a fish market, which is really kind of crazy fish market in Naples, which is not really yeah. where you want to go. Um, not at all. So, so yeah, if, no, if she's I, from the Philly area. I have a feeling one day she's going to walk up to you and be like, you know what I just thought? What if you lock the refs in a room and you'd be like, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> we did this before. We're not allowed. <laughs> By the way, your wife has good taste. I watched that that Tottenham Mourinho uh, show, and you're right. She was right. Mourinho came off great. I know. How'd yeah. they do that? It's just, I the don't know. The power of editing. It's, it's C- CGI, voiceovers. Yeah, AI, dude. <laughs> AI. It's a deep fake. <laughs> I, I saw... Thing. <laughs> I saw a clip uh, recently. Of, uh, so you, I, I don't know her name, but her, I guess her, her first name is Carrie. She was on uh, on live. Uh, you were talking about Edgewater Castle. Uh, she so also owns a team. She owns oh, she's a, a part owner of Edgewater Castle, uh, which yes. is uh, uh, we're, we're friends with the owner of that team, which is uh, based out, out of uh, out of Chicago, and it's a, a, a team uh, built essentially like a lot of immigrants and refugees, and it's a great uh, uh, a story. So it made me so happy to hear. Just people talking about American soccer on morning uh, on a morning show, and and I and I love you know you started talking about uh, Campo Basso, so I'm curious about just bringing this uh, story and and just bringing the sport to more American fans. What are the uh, the morning show? I don't know exactly what the demographic is of people who are watching morning show. How how much soccer can you get on on the show? Are the producers cool with it? Is is Kelly cool with it? Like because I mean, for us, you're speaking to you're speaking to us directly. Right. But we but paid how, attention. We perked up right away. <laughs> but how easy it is, is it uh, to to explain the game and and bring the game to American fans? That's a great question. You know, her that our audience is predominantly women. But as as soon as I joined the show, you know, I said, listen, this show is about being, especially that the show that I, we do in the morning. It's about being yourself and. I said, I'm going to bring sports in, guys. I'm just going to bring sports in, and I'll be judicious with it, but it's coming into the show. I'm, in the first 20 minutes, I'm talking about what I watched, what I'm thinking about, what's on my mind. We have a soccer team. I'm going to go to Italy. You guys are going to shoot a little segment. We'll bring it back for the show. Yeah. I want to grow the, the, the brand of our team and make, you know, because there's so many expats in North America from the Campo Basso region. And I said, that's what I'm doing. They're like, great, we should do it. And I got to tell you, the demographic is, we have such a strong demographic, but we're growing a male demographic for live at nine o'clock in the morning. There's like, I have more husbands that I'll be walking, you know, the dog in the park, like, hey, I watched a show with my wife. Keep talking about sports. Keep talking about yeah, sports. Yeah. So I got to be, I got to be so judicious awesome. today. Yeah. So today I went on a rant about March Madness, about the brackets. And I said, guys, all you have to do, whatever game you're watching, whatever, all this, all this is, 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 is 
ridiculous. Just watch the last five minutes of each game. That's all you need to do. Just watch the last right. five minutes. It'll last an hour. It's an hour. <laughs> yeah. and, it's an hour. And it's the most exciting part of the game. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's genius, actually. It's I, good advice. I mean, but when it comes to uh, when it comes to soccer, it is. It's only an hour and a half, though. It's only. It, no, no, I mean, it's two hours. It's no, two it's hours an hour and forty five minutes because beginning to end. But I mean, if you saw, I don't know if you saw the the Manchester United Liverpool FA Cup game. That was literally one of the craziest games I have ever seen. Uh, uh, the the four four to three, and yes, it went it went to extra time. It was a title fight. But there, there's there is no uh, watching the last five minutes. Of a football match, no. that, that's not even no, an option. No. <laughs> that's why. I, that's why I was very specific about basketball. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, that sport you can watch for five minutes. <laughs> no, I actually have to. Yeah, I want to bring this up because uh, very early on, I believe this was in college. Uh, I turned on the TV. I I woke up and I saw one of these segments you talk about, like when you go to Italy. You know, live would put these uh, little segments together, and it was a behind the scenes of your wife. And I can't remember who the co-host at that time was. Waking up at like this crazy hour, she would go to sleep really early. It was about the process of her being on a morning show, and I thought to myself, "Oof, I'll never do that. Uh, that seems brutal, yeah. right?" And then, as yeah. a comedian, sometimes I used to live on the Upper West Side, not far from the ABC studios, and I would wake up sometimes, and I would not. I'm sorry, not wake up. I'd be coming home from the bar or you know doing stand up <laughs> at like four or five in the morning. And I'd see limos pulling up, and maybe it was your wife or whoever, someone else. And I thought, like, man, I can't believe I'm going to bed when they're already going to work. I'll never do that. Well, a year ago, I joined a morning show, uh, and my life is completely turned upside down. So our show used to start at 9, so I would go to bed at, at 9 p.m. and wake up at 3 a.m. to be able to get to the studio. Give us and give the audience just an idea of what your typical weekday is. Like, what's a Tuesday evening? And what's your? when do you go to bed? When do you wake up? How early do you have to get yeah. to the studio? Alexis is mainly looking for advice directly for himself. <laughs> 100%. This is for me. Oh. Audience, you can listen to the last five minutes of this, part, of this interview. So around, you know, we eat dinner early. We get done, we get, get done eating dinner. With, by, we're, we're done feeding ourselves by 7. We're done. Okay. Okay. And then we we are empty nesters, so we just go up and hang out, bed or whatever. And and I'm catching up on Cabombasso stuff. I'm watching the news programs um, in Italy that are they have they have they have so many TV sports programs talking about Serie D. It's bananas. It's wow. bananas. I mean, <laughs> it's gr- I went on one a month ago, and I had the time of my life. So I'm catching up on that. I fall asleep around 11.30, okay? I fall asleep around 11.30. My alarm goes off at 6.30, and I get out of bed at 6.45. I make coffee for my wife. I shave, I shower, and I leave my house at 7.45, and we live eight minutes away from the studio. I live on the east side. Oh, that helps. And, <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a big plus I, right there. I walk into the door at 8 a.m. So I woke up at 6.45. I walk into the door at 8 a.m., hair makeup they brief me on the guests that what's up at you don't ask them about this you can ask them about that blah 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 blah, blah. and here are some items to talk about in the morning and then we're done we, we tape a show at 9 a.m sometimes we tape a, a second show for another date and i'm done i'm done by with everything i need to do after after waking up at 6 45 i'm done at noon Wow. Okay. Yeah, my life is a little different. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, the, we we record. Yeah, we record in Stanford, Connecticut, so it's a little different. Ooh. So Ooh. yeah, yeah, yeah. That face has it all. <laughs> I am certainly not eight minutes from the studio. I'm about forty-five in the morning and about an hour and a half coming back. So I get okay, home but, around noon. But forty-five in the morning, you can kind of like you're prepping for the show. You're getting you know, you know what you're gonna you know you know yeah. what you're doing right. So yeah, it's, it's I'm fine. Time. Once I get there, we have the we have the more we have the meeting in the morning, that kind of stuff. But I remember the your wife at that time, like Kelly would have to sit in hair and makeup much longer than what you're saying. I mean, it was like a, it was like a, she was like 40 minutes or something. And I was like, what are they doing? Every hair gets hairspray. <laughs> How are you in a chair for 40 minutes? <laughs> it takes me. I timed it. I think it takes me nine minutes from the time I walk into the studio until I sit mm. in the chair, and, and that's when like. You know, they're doing, I'm like, nine minutes, you got nine minutes, just do what you need to do. <laughs> no, okay. I mean, we got to, you know, ex- use our male privilege, and this is one of them. Yeah, nine yeah, minute yeah. makeup. Yeah, <laughs> hurry up. 
one hand has got hair makeup brush, the other one's got hairspray. We're done. We're good. I don't care what it looks like. They're looking at the smile, kid. <laughs> this is what makes the money. Shut yeah. up. Anyway, <laughs> Who cares about the hair? Um, the uh, last question, I just want to, you know, you are, it's great. This, look, talking to you, um, it, it, I mean, it just clearly shows you are a, a very much involved owner uh, in, in this club. And, and it's not a, it's not something for your uh, portfolio uh, by any means. It, it is, uh, so it, it's really great to see. I, I really want to know just your, your thoughts on like, and, and just the feelings of like, the moment Campo Basso, when they get to Serie A, what, how are you, how are you envisioning that already? What is, I, what are, what is the foundation being laid in place to not only get that done, but just celebrate that moment? What, what would that mean for you? Um, you just gave me goosebumps, man. Honestly, <laughs> just gave me goosebumps. Said, ah, oh my God. Luckily I'm with a group that has a long range, very focused plan, a sustainable plan. Cause a lot of people come in, they dump all their money in, they don't make, they don't get promoted. And sometimes they get relegated right away. I've seen plenty of ownerships groups that, you know, dump money into a league and they're yeah. relegated. That's, that's yeah. a major loss. As you can see, just, just revenue wise. So we have a very, very specific plan on how our budget is going to look compared to all the other teams. And if you look at it, it's interesting. Some of the, some of the smallest budgets are doing way better and are in um, promotion zones versus the guys that spend so much money chasing that title. It's really, it's really important to get good people um, that on the ground, a coach and a sporting director. We have two of the best. Um, our coach played with Maradona at Napoli. Okay. Wow. He's, he's a legend. He's so smart. And he's just, you know, we, we adore him. And the sporting director has found us, you know, these guys, these young guys. Because in Serie D, you have to play with four under 20, uh, um, under the age of 20 at all times. Oh wow! Wow, okay. meaning like they so, can't even be subbed off, like or or, or they off, have to start. You got to sub another under twenty in. Whoa! Whoa that's I did crazy. not know that. That so, is remarkable. So the key to winning Serie D, and by the way, there's seven groups. There's seven groups of seventeen teams. Okay, there's seven groups, wow. all regional. Yeah, yeah. Only the first, only the first place team of each group gets promoted. It's harder to get promoted in Serie D than in Serie, Serie C, for sure. Wow. So you have to be better than all the other first place teams as well, on, on top of all the, the other uh, clubs that, that are in. All the, all the first place teams in Seb, all every seven, every first place team of each group goes up. So you have to finish in first. Oh, okay. It's yeah, yeah. It's like what Wrexham was trying to get out of the name. Yeah, Actually, yeah, you have yeah, to yeah. finish top to get automatic promotion. That's and wild. So the key, the key is, is having, you know, scouting and getting these young guys. We have 18, 18 year olds, 19 year olds that, you know, are going, we invest in them and hopefully they'll be, you know, that's another, that's another part of this business. You invest in a young guy, he can be 10 X what you put into him. Sell him on, later yeah. on. Right. You know, you, when, when the time is right, but no, we have really, I got, for, I got lucky because I didn't know what I was doing. I still don't know what I'm doing. I, I, I know a lot about soccer. I watch it. Uh, I played it. I, I know what, you know, I, I know, you know, enough to have a conversation about certain players, but we have such a good group with a long term sustainable plan to keep professional soccer in Campo Basso where it belongs at a high level at all times. Wow. Amazing. Well, one day we'll have to meet you in person so we can have a conversation about some of the stories your coaches told you about Maradona. <laughs> <laughs> but we will not put that on air. <laughs> because we can. That's a whole different documentary. <laughs> They're amazing. They're amazing. I'm sure they are. Stop, stop, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run in an eight you're minute get, circle yeah. around ABC Studios <laughs> until get, I find your apartment. You're giving us goosebumps, yeah. Mark. <laughs> hey, listen, um, I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you a couple of Campo Basso jerseys. I'll have my people reach out. Oh, and that'd just, be the best. Yeah, yeah, dude. Thank just you. Rock on, on a show, and especially if we get promoted. When we get promoted, a little celebration. Maybe I'll come back on and talk to you guys. Would love that. You're more than welcome. Uh, Mark Consuelos, uh, uh, owner of Camp Campo Basso, uh, obviously uh, live with uh, Kelly and Mark. Uh, this is just an absolute honor. Yeah, uh, seriously, welcome back on the show anytime. But yes. thank you so much for joining us. It's been super cool. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.